Have you ever wondered why Brisbane is, well, here? I mean, why not over that way or further up river? Just who decided to put the city here? In this documentary, I'm going to find out the truth about who decided to put Brisbane here, but more importantly, why? There was a problem. The penal colony at Port Macquarie, initially remote, was now quickly finding itself close to growing civilian settlements. A new location was needed to send repeat convict offenders from Sydney, somewhere much further away. Enter John Oxley, who was sent north from Sydney on the 22nd of October 1823, under orders from New South Wales Governor Thomas Brisbane to scout the northern areas, what was what is now Queensland, for the site of a potential new penal settlement. He was to stop in at Port Curtis, which is actually Gladstone, Port Bowen, and on the return journey to stop here at Moreton Bay. He entered Moreton Bay on November 29 and came across two castaways, Pamphlet and Finnegan, at Point Skirmish at the southern end of Bribe Island. There had originally been four in their party, Parsons and Thompson. Thompson died while they were out at sea, and Parsons had wandered off further north, beyond Noosa. The castaways told Oxley about a large river they had discovered south, and they guided him to it. Oxley was deeply impressed by the river, which he named the Brisbane, after Governor Brisbane. I think many people are under the impression that it was John Oxley who was the first European to enter the Brisbane River, but that honour really does go to the three castaways. And not only that, Oxley omitted all mention of the castaways in his official record, thereby giving himself full credit for discovering the Brisbane River. Oxley journeyed all the way along the river to a place he called Termination Hill, which is at Wakehole. He arrived there on the 3rd of December. He did some surveys, then came back up the river and re-entered the bay. See that date there? It says 1824. However, we know that Oxley first entered the Brisbane River in 1823. Okay, hang in there. More clues coming. Oxley landed here at Redcliffe on the 5th of December. He had a look around, was pretty impressed by with what he saw, and then he left for Sydney the very next day. In his report to Governor Brisbane, Oxley recommended that here at Redcliffe be the site of the penal settlement. He went on to write, Redcliffe, however, must be viewed more in the light of a naval post or depot for stores than as being adapted for principal settlement. The Brisbane River represents so many superior situations. By February 1824, Oxley had handed in his report about which of the three areas he was sent to explore, and Governor Brisbane added his own letter. It includes, The Surveyor General was dispatched on the 22nd of last October in His Majesty's Cutter Mermaid to examine Port Bowen, Port Curtis and Moreton Bay, with the country immediately adjoining. And his report upon the capacity of the two latter for the purposes of convict settlements, I have now the pleasure to enclose, as it commences a new era in the history of the continent of New Holland, by the discovery of a large and an important river. By that, of course, he means the Brisbane River. It was on the 1st of September 1824 that Henry Miller of the 40th Regiment set sail from Sydney with a cargo including, I've got it here, uh, botanist and explorer Alan Cunningham. Uh, also on board, of course, was Oxley. 14 soldiers with their families, 29 convicts, a surgeon and a storekeeper. So up they came. They arrived at Point Skirmish and quickly found Parsons, the other castaway who had been left behind. And then on the 12th of September 1824, the penal settlement here at Redcliffe was begun. Unfortunately, Commandant Henry Miller had only been given the barest minimum resources with which to start and maintain the Redcliffe penal settlement. He was in desperate need of men skilled in construction, and also, someone had actually forgotten to pack the medicine. Robert Hoddle, in recording the landing of people and goods, noted that Commandant Henry Miller was mad as a March hare. 
Oxley didn't hang around too long here at the penal settlement. On the 16th of September, he left with Alan Cunningham and Lieutenant Butler to go and further explore the Brisbane River, this time to go further. It's certainly blowing a gale here. I'm trying to tell you all about this fascinating and historic place. And uh, I don't think you can hear anything I'm saying. On his second journey up the river, Oxley went as far as Termination Hill and then kept going to further explore inland. Then of course he had to come this way to come back out into the bay and up to Redcliffe. Is it possible on that return journey in 1824, as the Clark says, that he did stop and have a look at the future side of the city? Did he find what became known as Wheat Creek uh, that's down near Roma Street? I mean, Roma Street is just over that way, just down, what is it, Marcuson Street. Is it possible? I've come around to the back of the monument and as you can see, it's really quite a long way up. And that makes me wonder, why would he land here? Because the land surface is way up that way, but the Brisbane River is way down that way. That's a, a heck of an ascent to get from your little boat down there all the way up here to start poking around. So if he didn't land here, and I can't really see why he would have, because there's really no landing place, that would indicate that this memorial stone was built in the wrong place. Hmm. And there's something else about this memorial that just doesn't read right. It says, here John Oxley landing to look for water. Shouldn't that be here John Oxley, comma, landing to look for water, comma, discovered the site of this city? It's really bizarre. It's a very, very strange plaque, this one. The consensus today is that this memorial is in the wrong spot. And in fact, Oxley landed further down the river, or is that upriver, um, at Milton. So I'm going to go down there and see if I can find that memorial stone. And this is the place here on Coronation Drive at Milton. The memorial stone that was put here, this was in 1988, so it's a lot more recent than the one I was just at. This was put up by the Institution of Surveyors Australia, Queensland Division, and uh, it commemorates uh, Oxley's Landing in this area here. There was a creek here called Western Creek, flowed somewhere around about here. So all the, uh, all the anoraks seem to think that this was the place where Oxley landed in 1824. Well, the sign actually says here on 28th of September 1824, Lieutenant John Oxley, Surveyor General of New South Wales, landed hereabouts to obtain fresh water from a nearby stream, declaring it to be by no means an ineligible station for a first settlement up the river. But he still had his eye on Breakfast Creek. Very nice view of the river from up here. Look at that, Brisbane River. That's West End across uh, the river over that way. Discover the dark heart of the capital of the Sunshine State on the bloody Brisbane CBD crime tour. Visit true crime scenes, including the last public execution, the Regent Theatre shootout, the arcade murder, wartime crime, and the lady who vanished. Join me, Jack Sim, and my team of guides to discover Brisbane's criminal history. Book a public or private tour at crimetoursaustralia.com.au. And here at Breakfast Creek, there is a memorial, yet another memorial to Oxley. This one says that he landed here in December 1823. That would be his first journey up the Brisbane River. He made another one, and it was on this second journey, probably on the 16th of September 1824, 
that he decided that Breakfast Creek could also be a strong contender for a new future settlement. Oxley then returned to Redcliffe briefly and then made his way back down to Sydney. Lovely spot here at Breakfast Creek. Newstead House is just up there. But less than two months later, Oxley was again sailing back to Moreton Bay for his third visit. On Tuesday the 9th of November 1824, HMS Amity left Sydney, bearing New South Wales Governor Thomas Brisbane and Chief Justice Francis Forbes, plus others. The Governor wanted to see for himself the progress, or lack thereof, at Redcliffe, and also the potential of future settlements along the Brisbane River. After spending two days at Redcliffe, they headed down the Brisbane River to scout a location for the Redcliffe settlement to be moved to. They travelled as far as Sherwood before turning back, and Governor Brisbane loved everything he saw. And compared to what the Brisbane River offered, Redcliffe seemed rather hopeless. The mosquitoes were a major problem. It was very difficult to get ships in and out of the area, and the water wasn't good. Henry Miller himself admitted that if they all remained much longer, they would have all died off. Soon after, Governor Brisbane and Oxley returned to Sydney. That magpie's following me. The Sydney Gazette stated, We are creditably informed that His Excellency intends either the removal of the present temporary settlement or the establishment of another about nine miles from the mouth of the Brisbane, which will be more desirable for the purposes of navigation. The site fixed was designated Eden Glassy by His Honour, the New South Wales Chief Justice Francis William Forbes, after his ancestral estate near Aberdeen in Scotland. In all honesty, the name Eden Glassy is the most ridiculous name for a settlement. No wonder it didn't stick. Charles Morton Miller, who was born here at Redcliffe on the 5th of November 1824. He is regarded as the first European born in what would one day become Queensland. He was baptised at St Philip's Church in Sydney. This is in fact the oldest Anglican church in Australia. The first one was burnt down by convicts in 1798. The second version of it was said to be the ugliest church in Christendom. In April 1825, Henry Miller received his orders to shut down the Redcliffe Penal Settlement and move the whole show down to the Brisbane River. Oxley had favoured two locations, one at Milton and one at Breakfast Creek as a potential future site for the settlement. Henry Miller, on the other hand, had other ideas. And it was Sydney pilot John Murray Gray who was dispatched up here to Moreton Bay to further survey the bay and also the river and lay marker boys for the safe transit of people and goods and boats coming from Redcliffe down here to the Brisbane River and to the new settlement. The place on the Brisbane River that Commandant Henry Miller chose was known to the local indigenous people as Mianjin. Miller, perhaps with Gray's advice, chose the site of present-day William Street. I guess Miller could have set up the new settlement here down near where Eagle Street is today, but that's a lot lower lying down there and, of course, much more prone to flooding. He came around this side and saw this long kind of ridge of land. William Street is one of the highest areas of the CBD, at least around this area here, which meant that A, there was going to be, um, it was going to be above the floodwaters, any potential floods. Secondly, you could also expect to get some nice cool breezes, especially in the summer months. And there was also some fresh water not far from here. As the land slopes away down there, the early settlers here called it Wheat Creek. It was a series of little ponds and lagoons around and under Brisbane City Hall that flowed down to Eagle Street. Oxley and Governor Brisbane were looking at a future penal site that could be developed later into a town and a thriving commercial centre. Henry Miller, on the other hand, he was a military man. He was looking at a future site as a place that was, that he could control, that had to keep the convicts in. And that was why he was here, that's why he got the job. So you had the river on, on two sides of the triangle with the Wickham Terrace Hills that way, further up that way there, as kind of a natural barrier. So it was almost like nature had given him a ready-made prison for his charges to come into. And so with the area chosen, it was time to build a little wharf and Commandant Miller 
uh, directed that a wharf should be built just down that way in front of the soon to be built commissariat store that was only a few years away the wharf which we know today as Queen's Wharf and also the casino is the, the Queen's Wharf development the wharf was actually originally known as King's Wharf and it was named after King George the fourth here is the, um, the commissariat stores with the later edition put on in the early 20th century that was that was King's Wharf and the and the ships coming in would dock here bring their wares up here and people as well convicts also it's funny to think that right there right in front of me there that's really where Queensland began three years after Commandant Miller brought the penal settlement down here to Brisbane that the um, the commissariat store was begun this was begun in 1828 and completed in 1829 and you know what I think that far off into the future when the new casino is torn down maybe a hundred years from now maybe 200 years from now that it will come down one day but when that happens I'm pretty sure the commissariat store will still be standing the settlement from 1825 was originally meant for secondary offenses usually things like robberies it was a bit later in 1831 that more hardened convicts were transferred here from Port Macquarie as that settlement was being closed and opened up for free settlement. However, in July 1825, Henry Miller was sacked from his role as Commandant of the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement and was replaced by new Commandant Peter Bishop. Miller, however, stayed on until October as Bishop's Engineer and Chief of Works, after which he returned to Sydney and then later to Tasmania. By Miller's own account, he was astonished that he had been sacked from his role. Was Forbes right though? Was Miller as mad as a March Hare? Or was Miller's performance at Redcliffe seen to be underwhelming, that he didn't really get the place shipshape enough for the likes of Governor Brisbane and others? Bearing in mind, of course, that Miller just did not have the resources. He wasn't given the resources to really make Redcliffe a success. So it may be unfair that he was sacked from his role as Commandant here. But anyway, he had his marching orders and off he went. So is there actually a memorial anywhere in Brisbane to Henry Miller? I'm not aware of one. The only place that remembers Henry Miller is further up ahead of me, near the new casino development. So the Oxley Memorial is just behind me that way, walking along North Quay before it goes onto the Riverside Expressway. And there's another memorial here, one you may not know about. Pretty close to the road here. This one here is to the glory of God, etc, etc, unknown pioneers. So this memorial stone here is to the unknown pioneers who died at Moreton Bay Settlement during the first perilous years of its founding. They no longer rest here, but near this place was the earliest known burial ground of our people in Queensland. I think specifically the people who were buried here, or at least some of the people who were buried here, were the children of the soldiers who were stationed here. I found a painting of their graves overlooking the river. Quite an unknown little memorial, this one. And not that you can really see it all that well at the moment because of all the development works here, but that's uh, Henry Miller Park just down there. It's always been an area of open ground here in Brisbane. It's been terraced and landscaped many times over the years. But that's it, that's the only place that I'm aware of that remembers Commandant Henry Miller, the guy who bought the convicts here and got Brisbane started. To the early European explorers, the Brisbane River looked almost too good to be true. It was wide and deep, there was fresh water to be found, excellent timber. To Thomas Brisbane, it was just a beautiful place. To John Oxley, it could be the site of a future settlement. To Commandant Henry Miller, it was a perfect prison. And to uh, the convicts, unfortunately, it was hell on earth. And of course, to the indigenous folks, this had been their home since time immemorial. Every one and every culture saw the Brisbane River in their own unique way. Alrighty, there we go. Thanks very much for watching this documentary about the founding of Brisbane. I certainly learned a lot researching this one. If you liked the video, please consider hitting that like button and also the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much and I will see you again soon.